what is the nature of dynamic friction in a humid hydrophobic nanocontact. So um, the, the floor is yours and I'll I, I, I would first like to thank uh, all organizers for in, inviting me to this conference. It, it, it's really a pleasure after cor Corona time. And uh, uh, this, this work was done uh, together with uh, colleagues from France, uh, Olivier Noel and uh, Pierre-Emmanuel uh, Mazran. Um, and uh, they performed uh, experiments and I tried uh, to reproduce and uh, to explain these uh, results uh, um, with my simulations. So, huh? okay, so uh, a, a short overview of this uh, subject. A actually, the pro problem with this subject is that uh, it, is, uh, it, it is very easy to, to, to generalize everything but uh, it is a very, 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 very various uh, topic with many details. And uh, basically, when, when I started do, doing this with Olivier, I realized we are feeling a puzzle. So some pieces of the puzzle we know, and some pieces of the puzzle we should uh, discover. So basically, uh, it, it, it is really nice uh, to start some early works uh, on, uh, on, on uh, sliding in contact in, in uh, Two phase, in two phases, and that's uh, capillary friction. You have uh, um, air phase, gas phase, and liquid phase. And uh, that, that, that was uh, one of the early simulations done uh, by Mark Robbins. And then um, I, I, I should point uh, experiments of uh, Elisa Riedo with uh, capillary condensation where uh, it was first time proposed uh, the mechanism. Then uh, uh, recently, relatively recently, uh, there were experiments with uh, tuning fork uh, um, AFM where they measured the uh, uh, mechanical properties of the capillary. And uh, then uh, there is a whole uh, um, uh, I would say uh, a cluster of, of, uh, of uh, research uh, done uh, where, uh, where people uh, took uh, AFM, they went uh, uh, through or uh, over a, a layer of water and measured uh, uh, frictional characteristics uh, of these systems. And uh, most recently, uh, a work where uh, humidity was uh, changed and uh, uh, friction was um, studied uh, in, in simulation and uh, in experiment. So uh, what uh, Olivier is doing, and I, in order that you understand uh, how we came to ideas in this talk, uh, is circular mode uh, AFM. So uh, circular mode AFM means that uh, his, his, his uh, probe uh, is uh, making uh, a circle uh, and he can measure both uh, uh, lateral and normal force uh, simultaneously, and that means that uh, he never interrupts uh, movement by back, going back and forth with, uh, uh, like in classical uh, AFM. Um, and uh, just just uh, briefly, that you know what is the plan of the talk. I'm going just to tell you something about uh, results by AFM, then uh, talk about uh, results uh, in AFM where we try to, 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 to see what is uh, happening um, in, in these uh, experiments and uh, give just short conclusion and outlook. So basically what I, Olivier is doing, he is turning uh, his uh, probe and uh, while he is turning it, uh, he is uh, he, uh, approaching it uh, to the substrate. In one moment, probe uh, touches the substrate or, uh, or a capillary bridge is uh, formed. And uh, then uh, he, he continues to press increasing uh, the normal force. And uh, in opposite direction, he starts to, to, um, um, uh, to, to uh, um, uh, he, he reverses direction, the, the, the probe goes slowly out of the contact, then uh, he can measure adhesion, and then uh, in one moment, the capillary bridge will snap. So we, we, we can uh, introduce all kinds of different uh, uh, properties like adhesion force. Uh, it, it is difference in, in normal force between 
uh, going uh, into the contact and out of the contact. You can introduce coefficient of friction. You can in in uh, introduce or you, you you can also measure jump in friction so the friction when contact is created so first uh, thing uh, thing uh, which, which you can already see if you look uh, his experiments on different velocities is that uh, for uh, um, um, for for uh, uh, gra gra uh, a a h uh, o opg uh, um, that uh, that uh, adhesion force doesn't depend on velocity because this uh, this distance between approach and retraction curves uh, stays constant when you change the velocity. And uh, now I would like uh, really to enter into details of this talk. So it is um, it is uh, this model of friction which was proposed. Uh, by uh, uh, Andres Vernes and uh, and um, um, in the, the Ryagin form, so where you have uh, this jumping friction and friction coefficient uh, then co uh, connected with the normal force, and um, we could uh, extract all this data, and uh, we saw that uh, with velocity this uh, jumping uh, friction, so that is uh, a left uh, uh, figure, uh, depends. Um, it has a power law with velocity uh, very close to linear, and coefficient free, uh, of friction depends linearly on velocity. Of course, uh, uh, adhesion force, uh, the blue points on the red diagram, uh, it, 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 it doesn't depend on velocity. Okay, so so it, it was a little bit uh, counterintuitive, you know. I, I, if you think uh, on on uh, condensation, uh, if you move your probe uh, faster, uh, condensation should have uh, less time uh, to 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 act. So basically, you would expect that friction should fall with uh, velocity, and uh, that's uh, something what uh, Elisa Riedo in in, in her uh, work uh, has obtained. So um, we created these simulations, and basically I have uh, I had a, a big substrate, and I have uh, put uh, water uh, on this substrate, and uh, the water has created droplets. So we started to, to move uh, the substrate, and then uh, these droplets got uh, attached uh, to the probe, and then uh, you, you you could see uh, with with uh, the displacement or. Uh, uh, that that uh, these uh, these uh, 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 droplets they they accumulate under the probe uh, it, it it grows and uh, at certain point because uh, um, uh, the the uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, surface tension of the droplet is going to pull it out of the, this uh, point of the closest approach between probe and uh, the substrate. So n n now I'm going to introduce you uh, into my uh, simulation. So we had uh, a substrate which was fixed. We had uh, a, a probe uh, which was uh, attached uh, to, to, to the um, uh, points with so that we could measure different forces. We had. Uh, I, I relatively large uh, amount of water, at least uh, the, the most of what uh, I could simulate in some uh, finite time. Uh, and uh, I try to make uh, um, a probe uh, to correspond uh, to, to AFM tip uh, radius, which uh, Olivier was using. So here, uh, uh, basically, I have uh, fixed uh, the, 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 um, the view on the probe, so substrate looks like as it is moving, but actually probe was moving. It rises as a, as it rises. There is this uh, snap, and uh, and uh, the, the the probe uh, is detached uh, from uh, from the substrate, uh, and before they were connected uh, by a capillary bridge. So just just once more, and then uh, I'm going to go to data. So of course uh, you 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 can uh, evaluate uh, normal force depend de dependence on uh, contact angle and um, if you have uh, uh, a hydrophobic uh, system you you are going to have uh, first normal um, force which is positive 
and, uh, and, and, and then uh, uh, when you stretch the droplet uh, enough, uh, the, 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 the droplet is going to start to resist to the, to the um, deformation and uh, you will have uh, adhesion also in uh, hydrophobic systems and in, in the hydrophilic systems, you're all going always to have uh, um, ad adhesive regime and um, I, I made uh, a very simple model for this. Uh, I treated uh, um, um, a, a capillary bridge as a cylinder, and uh, these uh, lines which go through uh, are, are results of this model. So, so it is also one of the results of Mark Robbins, who, who showed that if your droplet is uh, large enough, you, you can basically describe it very well with uh, continuum uh, results. So basically, you, you see two lines, and one line was uh, for a moving probe, and the other line was uh, for a fixed uh, uh, probe, where, uh, where the probe was not moving, just uh, going up and down. So basically, this is, this is uh, the, the snapshot, so you, you, you can see the compressed, droplet in a hydrophobic case. You can see the stretch droplet in hydrophobic case where it uh, produces adhesion and then uh, the droplet detaches. Okay, so uh, what, what, what uh, further uh, um, I could do is I could uh, calculate uh, dependence of lateral force on the surface and uh, I could see that uh, lateral force depends linearly on the surface that's uh, an that's, um, uh, uh, interesting conclusion because uh, uh, some other uh, uh, proposed that uh, it depends on, uh, on, on, on the contact um, uh, perimeter, so, so just uh, a contact line between a substrate uh, and uh, the, the, um, the water, liquid. Uh, liquid um, and uh, what, what we also obtain is that uh, uh, lateral force uh, depends um, uh, with a power, power law on velocity. Uh, it increases as it, as it inks, experiment, but uh, the power is uh, smaller than uh, what would be expected, uh, than what was obtained uh, in experiment. So basically, at, at this point, uh, um, I would like to just get a little bit uh, philosophical. So, so basically, if you have um, uh, if if you have uh, my simulations, I, I did these simulations with uh, the constant volume. So basically, uh, that that could be a lower limit of this uh, de dependence of uh, lateral force on the velocity. But uh, of course, uh, in experiment, uh, as uh, in the first slides I showed, uh, there could be accumulation. So with time, uh, the droplet could uh, increase the volume. So uh, basically, if you have a higher velocity, it, it, uh, it, it would uh, maybe increase uh, larger, and then uh, it would be least limited, uh, this increase would be limited by other process, maybe evaporation, but uh, it, it remains uh, to be in investigated. Uh, and uh, of course, what is interesting is that uh, in experiment, uh, we see also that uh, coefficient of friction is depending linearly on velocity. So there is a question how this, uh, this uh, jump in or uh, initial uh, lateral force is connected to friction coefficient, which are processes which are connected, connecting and linking uh, two, two, two of them. So uh, ju just uh, in uh, conclusion, um, uh, so this, in this talk, uh, um, we, we, uh, we introduce uh, another, mo an, another uh, mechanism for creation of capillary bridge, and that's uh, by accumulation of water in, in a moving contact. So if you have uh, asperity, uh, it could come uh, along uh, to a small droplet which is already there at your surface, and it just collects her, and then uh, around this droplet, uh, the capillary bridge could be formed. 
uh, we showed that uh, lateral force in simulations depends on contact surface and uh, increases with velocity. And um, uh, we, we show also that adhesion force uh, in, in systems has a complex beca behavior, which can be captured by a, a model. And also, uh, we could show that uh, it, it doesn't depend uh, on velocity. Thank you very much. Let, let's start with Paul. Why do you have adhesion when you have hydrophobic interface? Well, uh, even in uh, hydrophobic systems, you have um, uh, Van der Waals interactions between uh, water and, uh, and, uh, and the substrate. It, it, it is not completely repelling, and that uh, if you stretch uh, the droplet enough, it, it will create uh, ad ad adhesion. So, so it's, it's just uh, Van der Waals forces which are playing the role. So if it is hydrophobic, that doesn't mean it wants to throw away water from itself and the fact that there is Van der Waals force. But you will have a positive Laplace pressure in the droplet if you have hydrophobic surfaces. You should get repulsion. I understand if you have Van der Waals interaction between the two solid walls, then that could help you to get attraction. No, no, but, but uh, you, you also can stretch the droplet, uh, so, so basically deform a droplet, and then uh, it, it turns in... But in then it's some dynamic effect due to viscosity and things like that. Yes. Thank you. I had exactly the same question. Uh, I'm wondering, to, to follow up, uh, I mean, can you get from your simulation, you, you have the interactions, right, in, in your simulation, so you can see what is the van der Waals interaction that the, the, the molecular dynamics is producing, correct? Yeah, yeah, yes, uh, I can do it. Yeah, so uh, is there, a, so I guess my follow-up question is, does your system reproduce the fact that there is a Laplace pressure there? And how does the force from that repulsive Laplace pressure compare to the attractive force from the van der Waals? And also, I guess you would get some attraction from the surface tension as well. So I would assume you could separate all those contributions because you, you have the simulation, you have the atomistic detail. So could you break down those different contributions? Actually, in, in this model, I, I did exactly that. So, so I had... Uh, 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 contribution of surface uh, energy of the of of, of this uh, uh, droplet, we, uh, compared to air, I had the contribution of surface energy of the um, of its interactions with the with the substrate, and uh, then then uh, if 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 I calculate energy and uh, calculate the force, I get in in the model uh, negative. Uh, uh, forces and adhesion in 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 the in in the hydrophobic system. Okay, and a follow-up question is: you you said it was a, a constant volume assumption. The AFM experiments, although it's fast AFM, it's still much slower than the thermodynamic time scales of the system. So a constant chemical potential assumption might be better. Uh, so have you? Can you do that? Uh, well, uh, I, I could uh, also turn it on uh, in lumps. I, I, I mean, uh, it would be possible. Uh, it, it, it is just um, that um, f f me personally, when I was designing this simulation, I, I was aware of your uh, publication with uh, Ashley Martini. Was not 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 quite sure because uh, I see just a, a few molecules flying around. Uh, in the in the simulation, and uh, and uh, th there should be some uh, equilibrium uh, um, uh, around uh, uh, um, d d d uh, in in this uh, volume. So so um, I, I'm not quite sure uh, if adding molecules would just uh, um, um, inundate uh, whole surface with uh, with uh, the, the the water. So so I decided uh, to design simulations uh, like this, but. Uh, Yes, it, it, it is one thing we should uh, uh, consider. So, so I, I was more looking into par partial pressure in, inside, and, uh, and, and partial pressure was, uh, was okay for, uh, for this uh, humidity.
I have a question. Um, water at surface is often ordered over a length scale of a few nanometers, something like one or two nanometers. That's about the size of your droplet. Is the water inside of the droplet ordered? Or can you, or can you determine an order parameter or heat capacity of the water? Would it change when you pull at the droplet? I, I must say, I, I, I didn't look at it, but uh, it, indeed, it, it is a very, very interesting uh, question. So, so I should look at uh, the, the, um, the structure of the water at the surface, but uh, I, I didn't uh, look uh, at it this point. But yes, it, it's legitimate and very, very interesting. Question. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. And, and now we switch to Guillermo Vilhena.